welcome to another edition of Classroom Chronicle. I'm your host, Pete Braley. Now, when you go to school in the morning, you think you walk into a building, you sit down at a desk, you don't think of maybe cracking open some eggs and mixing up some ingredients and then serving lunch to a lot of folks. But that's what happens at Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School. We came today to check out the, uh, the culinary program. This is a nationally ranked program that they have here at Vogue Tech. And they have over 150 years of experience. You can see some of the careers that folks go on to as they experience, uh, as they graduate here from Greater New Bedford Folk Tech. Chef Henry Bosquet is our friend and he's here and we're going to talk to him next. We're here with Chef Henry Bosquet, and uh, how long have you been here at uh, Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech? Well, this is my 12th year full-time teaching, okay. uh, but I've been here since 2001 uh, as a sub and a teacher's aide and stuff like that, you know, when did making you my get, way around. When did you get interested in, uh, in this as a in career? Teaching in teaching? Well, what came first, culinary or teaching? Well, culinary actually came okay. first. Um, I was actually a graduate of this program in 1994, uh, and I went to work, and I saw the guys that I worked with, and they, they looked kind of like unhappy in the kitchen. So after 30 years of cooking, you know, <laughs> um, so I wanted to figure out a way to get a you know better balance of family life. Um, yeah, you know, as you know, I, I owned restaurants and stuff, so I spent my time in the business. I cut my teeth. I did my you know did my did my due diligence there anyway, yeah. uh, and learned what I could. And then um, I was a English major, English education major at Bridgewater, uh, and it it really it was a lot of it was a lot of intensive reading and things like that. And I'm like, I don't think I could be an English teacher. You know, it was just, it was a lot of work. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, I admire those guys, you know, uh, math English teachers, they do a lot of work, history, right? Um, not that we don't do a lot of work. It's just a different kind different. of work. Yeah. yeah, it's a very different kind of work. So, um, and that's really, I was always kind of interested in teaching and I always loved cooking. That's how I always made my living. Uh, and it just seemed like the perfect match for me. You know, and when I started subbing here, it felt like it too, you know, it really did. So uh, I've been doing it uh, professionally now for 12 years, and I absolutely love it. Wow. So, um, as I mentioned before, when you think of coming to school, you, th as you said, you think of a desk and a you know, chalkboard or a yeah. whiteboard or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think of, I mean, I was just back in your full kitchen and the coffee shop here. I mean, you're, this is a totally different environment. Yeah, we, we work in a live industrial setting. Uh, hmm. we, let, we, we actually, our kids are in charge of quite a bit of food. Um, we serve about 100, 110 guests, maybe more some, some days, uh, here out of the coffee shop. Plus, uh, my program is also in charge of the early education program where we feed all the child care kids. So uh, we feed 40 kids a day, uh, three and five year olds, uh, a snack, and uh, a lunch. Wow. So, and we try to do you know, a little something fun and different every day. Uh, so our kids learn something new and they get new experiences in there as well. So, so what type of student do you have? Do you have someone who, who wants to get into the food industry? So, so in vocational education, we find a lot of tactile learners, the kids that uh, enjoy working with their hands and feel accomplished after a day's work. Uh, and they're the ones who are engaged most in our programs. Um, you know, in terms of that, you know, are they, not all of them are as ac academically focused as, mm -hmm. um, as you might find in uh, like a conventional high school where, where students are working to go to Brown University or working to go to Harvard, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, here, they're, they're trying to get a very diverse educational experience, right? They're learning a trade and they're doing everything you got to do in New Bedford or Fairhaven High in half the time. So they have to take work yeah. during shop cycle home and they have homework to do over the shop cycle just so they can keep pace with their 180 day neighbors, you know? You have been here, you said 12 years, yep. so I'm sure you've had kids go on to... Oh yeah, yeah. What, what are they doing oh, now? So, so we have students in, uh, well we have students that went to college, um, we have students that went into the military, but the majority of our students go right into the workforce. Um, most of them actually go into the workforce and go to college. They do both, uh, which is what I did. I mean, I think that's, you know, in, 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 in this world, in this day and age, that's what's more affordable, I think, you know? Yeah. Uh, kids who are taking their, their time, getting their education, and making sure they're doing what they want to do. They're investing in things that are important to them and that are going to build their portfolios, you know? So. What are they doing? Are they, they working we have, in restaurants? Yeah, we have some, we have some, I have uh, one of our graduates, uh, Nathan is a, um, like a research and development chef. Uh, 
Oh. Uh, he went to Johnson Wales. He actually did the early enrollment program through here. Is that uh, developing new new meals, new recipes? Yeah, or? yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, yeah. It's working yeah. in research and development. It's okay. uh, developing new entrees, new ways of doing things. <laughs> here, wonder what this tastes like. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's the kind of stuff he does. Um, I how know, many how many great recipes come from mistakes? Lots. Yeah, yeah you'd be yeah. surprised. Yeah. Um, and then we have students who are line cooks, of course. Uh, we have students in the general manager position, uh, running like Olive Gardens and, and uh, different chain restaurants. Do you get into that? Do you get into, uh, as, as you said, you ran a restaurant, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of business involved. Oh yeah, absolutely. We, um, more of that is a junior and senior year, we talked about entrepreneurship. Uh, we do some project with them sophomore year. Uh, actually, Kathy Chase is our business teacher. She teaches the whole business end of it mm -hmm. uh, for, for sophomores. Um, actually, we just started that. We incorporated that into the program last year. We always kind of did a piece of that in our related teaching. Right. Uh, like each day, I teach a related course in the morning. It's uh, it's basically the background knowledge they're going to need for the day's activities. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so it's a little bit of the history, a little bit of the anthropo anthropology around cooking, um, and then well, obviously weights and measurements and the you know the integral math that that's important for it. Right. I noticed um, that uh, as I was looking at the uh, curriculum or whatever online. Uh, freshmen do this, sophomores do that. I noticed something called food math or mm -hmm. how, food costing. What, what what is that? That's so, so that's the cost how, of food. Yeah, or? exactly. Yeah. So that we you know we teach the kids. It, look, it comes in on the invoice. It looks like this. Um, you know, this price represents this many boxes or jars or cases or pounds, right? And then we show them how to divide it and figure out what it is to cost per ounce, and then how they can build a menu and build entrees and know what their plate charge is so they know what to upcharge wow. so it covers labor and all that stuff labor and overhead and insurance so that's, and so all that's the math they will use every day oh well, yeah absolutely yeah i mean it's you know it's uh, not quite bouncing your checkbook math but it's the kind of math that if they're in the role as executive chef or general manager they're going to need they're absolutely going to need because they want to know you know every restaurant wants to know what the bottom line is what their prime costs are right and what it, what it costs them to run business you know so what's a typical day like I know it's different right, depending so, on... So every day, basically yeah. here, we start with a, a one-hour morning-related class, right? Today we talked about coffee because we're doing breakfast, right? Okay. Um, so my program runs a full hot breakfast for the staff. They have about an hour or so to come in and get breakfast uh, if they're on a break. If they have, you know, most of them have 15-minute breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, so they come in and we have about four minutes to get them breakfast. So we put the kids right here in front of them so they can watch them cooking their eggs. So we teach them how to cook eggs, home fries, bacon, sausage, all that stuff. Um, and then we have three or four entrees that we get ready for the menu. We have the childcare lunch and snack that they get ready. So our students are engaged from the moment they get here, you know? <laughs> They're and, busy all day. And this coffee shop is, is open? Oh yeah, yeah, it's open yeah. to the public, but it's it's funky hours. It's like ten forty nine to twelve fifteen. Uh, so it's really hard <laughs> to bell, say. When the bell Come on in, off. yeah. <laughs> Come on in for lunch from ten forty nine to twelve fifteen. You know. Uh, so I it's weird say, for outsiders, and it's kind of a long way back here, I think you noticed. But I must say, I was very impressed with the uh, security procedures. Uh, in today's uh, world, you can't be too safe. Yeah, we, I mean, we had to sign in, we had to have our pictures taken. Uh, yeah, 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 it's a big deal. I was very so, impressed by so, all of our students and staff were these lanyards with IDs. So, so anybody who comes to go to you, the coffee you know shop knows through that. Yeah, well, absolutely. Right. So you have to wear yes. a visitor's ID. Yep, right. absolutely. Okay. Yep, yep. Now, are you helping out with the serving of lunch for all the students, or is that no, a different? No, no, that's an entirely separate animal. Okay. Uh, and uh, they are actually they're in-house employees. They're okay. employed by the district, and they work uh, in a cafeteria there, and they prep and serve all the food uh, without the help of the culinary arts staff. So. Right. That's cool. All right. Well, is it okay if we look around? Yeah. Come on in. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I would suggest you maybe go that way and then work your way through the back. Okay. Right? And the floor is slippery, you said. Why is that? Yes. Well, just from cooking it and could the oils. Be. There's, you know, yeah, we try to main, like keep on top of that, but yeah. if there's a spill or something like that that we didn't see, it might not have been addressed right away. So just keep an eye out for water on the floor, mostly just water. That's just now, and peels. You might find a peel or two. Now, I've known you for years. Right. And when you get home, do the kids say, Dad, what's for dinner? And, and how they do you react? Do. I mean, you've been around food all day. They do, yeah. Um, well, luckily, my wife is very good about preparing for us. So, so her and I, we spend some time on Sundays prepping up. So usually we know what's ready for dinner. So <laughs> it's usually a pretty heat and eat kind of thing, you know? Like yesterday was chilly. We just warmed it up, had some cornbread, and that's what we have for dinner, no. you know? Does the, no. uh, does the chef do fast food? Um, uh, not a very rare occasion. <laughs> Certainly not in the last couple of years. And know? I must say, you look great. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know you. it's been a hard, uh, hard it has, journey. And I'm, you know, I'll never stop. So it's one of those things you got to keep going. Right. So. All right. Let's take a look around. All right. Great. Thanks. Pete.
We're with Lynn and Aliana, and what are you working on? Macaroni and cheese for the child care. That must be one of your favorites to make. Yes, I love making mac and cheese, especially the Alfredo. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. Now, have you taken this recipe and used it at home somehow? I have, yeah. yeah. Alfredo, I made it at home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, sophomore year, right? Mm -hmm. When did you, or why did you decide to get into culinary? Oh, because I really like cooking a lot. Have you always? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what have you made that... Like, uh, um, yeah. like in general, like... Yeah. yeah. Like, what are some of the things you've made? Um, oh, we made, like, <laughs> Alfredo and, like, what else? We, we, we made like, se like, we made, like, Caesar salad, like, homemade and, like, um, what's it called? We just made um, cinnamon buns, like, stuff like that. Nice. Cinnamon yeah. rolls and stuff. Like have you made that. anything that, that surprised you? You didn't think you would, you know, I, there's no way I can make that. Meatloaf. Meatloaf? Yeah, I made meatloaf to serve to uh, the cafe. Is it, uh, what, what's special about the meatloaf? Um, it has, like, good flavor. We, like, put sauces that we, like, make, like, from scratch. Everything is from scratch, yeah. Nice. <laughs> have you thought of what you want to do after uh, graduation? No, no, no. Not sure yeah. yet. Do you want to stay in the food business, maybe? Probably, maybe. yeah. It's a possibility. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This must be one of your favorite things, huh? To 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 have shop instead of going back to academics. Yeah, shop is the funnest. Shop is a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blessing. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I will get out of your way, and there you go with some delicious mac and cheese. Yeah. We are inside the kitchen now with uh, Chef Henry uh, Bosquet, and uh, what, I noticed you just kind of wander around, right? Well, it, it looks like that, yeah, but <laughs> what I'm doing is every, every student in here is working as a team right now because uh, it's kind of early in the year. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to make sure the attention to detail is there, like food safety and washing their hands and changing their gloves and using the proper tools for the proper task and stuff like that. Right. So I do, it's kind of like honeybeeing. I just, I go from table to table, from student to student to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, correcting the things that need to be correct. Like if you're dicing an onion, they're holding a knife wrong, I want to make sure I catch that right, right. away. You know right. what I mean? Um, I things noticed, like that. I just noticed that uh, someone was uh, walking away with a container and you said wait 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 that's money yep yep because they they, they got a rubber spatula and we teach them that that stuff is you know we use those tools so we can scrape things out and get all the product out of it otherwise they throw away, throw some away. three or four servings of product at that times you know 300 days a year or 180 days a year that we're open here well, i heard a statistic the other day about the amount of food in this country oh, that it wasted? Is wasted yeah it's millions Incredible. of pounds yeah. yeah it's sad actually all yeah. right yeah. now who, who should we talk to now um, we, you, you know, you said we're gonna talk to a crew oh, down these, there. Oh, these two young ladies right here, right? Allow me. You guys are gonna tell them what you're making, right? <laughs> Mr. <Braley. laughs> oh no, no, not me. All right, so they are um, Hilda. What are you? What what nationality are you? Guatemala, right? And you're making what? Pupusa. Papusa, right? Papusas? Papusa. Okay, what is that? It's a um, masa with cheese and... Kind of like a really thick tortilla. Okay. Right? Kind of, right? And then they, they fry them on the grill. Now, where did you get this idea? It's actually something she wanted to make for us. Wow. So this is sort of uh, experiential. You know, we're giving her an opportunity to make something from, from home, right? Okay. Um, and teach us about it. So she showed us how to mix it with the water and it takes a lot of heating. She worked it really good. Uh, she learned that she probably needs a table. It's a little bit lower for her. <laughs> where are you from? Guatemala. Okay. You know, our students come from a diverse background, so yeah. we like to let them experiment with their native products and things that they like. To, you know, stuff that I didn't really get to see this until I started working with students from Latin America. So it was the first time I ever saw a Reda Papusa was probably five or six years ago. Right. I had a student, Monica, who was making them for now us. Now this so. gets fried? Uh, on a griddle. Okay. Yep. Right? So we got a griddle out there. We used for breakfast this morning. We we're going to kind of scrape the breakfast off it and she's gonna go out there and fry these up. We're just gonna sample them. We're not selling them today, but they might be an entree on the menu one of these days. All right. So. Well, right. good luck. Thank you for talking to us. Mm -hmm. 
What are you working on? Obviously, dicing onions. Okay. What's your name? Justin. Justin. They don't make you cry, do they? Yep. Do they really? I have that happen to me every now and then, but only certain onions. I don't know. Have you studied why? Why certain onions? Yeah, I don't know why. It's. Is there a... Did you have to learn how to do this, or is there a certain way they teach? Not really. You just kind of really. dice them. Dice them up, huh? Yeah. Is, is this something you do at home now? No. No? <laughs> is dicing one of your favorite things? Be honest. No. No, it's not one of mine either. Don't worry about it. So what made you choose culinary? Um, I just like to cook, and then... Can you see yourself going into uh, a business? Probably not. No. Have you thought about the future at all? What you want to do next? Not yet. No. All right. I'll let you get back to it. No tears right now. You're Thanks. doing good. All right. Monique and Cheyenne, what are you working on, Cheyenne? Pulled pork, um, mashed potatoes with um, barbecue sauce. Ooh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Do you get to eat some of it? Yeah, yeah. after we, um, like for lunch, we have it. So after school, you don't need a snack, right? I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Monique, what about you? You working on the same? Um, no, I'm actually working on lasagna. What are you working on? Lasagna. Lasagna, wow. Are you learning a recipe that you take home, maybe? Um, yeah, it's easy to make, too. So it's always like you can make it at home, which is good. Because yeah. we get, at the end of the year, we get a CD that has all the recipes that we've made. Nice. And since we're seniors, we have one from last year with all the recipes. So That's fantastic. It. So it's your sen senior year? Yeah. What, uh, what are you doing after this? Um, I probably will go to early child care. Okay. Early child care is your yeah, choice? Yeah, I like kids. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Monique? Um, either go to college or join the military. Okay. But are you going to stay with food preparation? Um, no. no. Uh, law enforcement. Very good. So what uh, what would you say about this course? Obviously, you've been in culinary for a couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, it's kind of fun. It's a lot of work, and it teaches you like how to actually like work in a restaurant, which is good. Yeah. You have like speed, it's all about speed. All about I don't speed. have that much. You don't have much speed? No. No, you yeah. look energetic, no? <laughs> Not really. Well, you can ask my chef. Yeah, oh, okay, maybe I will, yeah. Well, best of luck in the future. Thank you. Uh, sophomores make uh, three items for the menu. Typically, the uh, upperclassmen do the majority of the menu. So we've got them doing um, a vegetarian option, which is a uh, refried bean and wild mushroom taco. Um, so they're going to make all the components for that. They do a grilled chicken Caesar. So they make the dressing, uh, marinate and grill a chicken, which yeah. you're doing over there, and then toss all the salad to order. So when it's ordered, they whip it all together, right? Yeah. Um, and then meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and vegetable. Because that. Nice. I mean, it's a, they're simple recipes, but they're, they're, um, they, they handle a lot of different basic techniques. And that's what we're teaching them here in a live industrial environment. In an environment where they're, they're on demand, they got to be busy, they got to understand mise en place is important. You know what I mean? So uh, let me get these mashed before they get gluey on us. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you want to make sure you Want to make sure it's on one. If it's on two, it'll throw a potato in your nose. Right? Yeah. You just said to make sure it's on one because if it's on two, it'll throw a potato in your nose. I want one of those. We're gonna. Isn't it nice? <laughs> yeah. I love making mashed potatoes in a mix mixer. If you have a little uh, KitchenAid or something at home, it's the best place to do it. Uh, what we're doing is breaking down the potato and mixing in the butter, right? And when the butter gets a little more melted, 
We got a little buttermilk here, which I like because it's got a little, uh, like a little creamy uh, sort of sour cream twang. Right? Now, I always stress out and sometimes make mine too. Uh, I put in too much milk. Is yeah, it just? Is wet. it just? You just have to feel it. Get the yep, feel for it's it. It's eyeballing. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's all eyeballing. I mean, can we work out a, a recipe that's specific? Yes. But I want I want everybody to try it, do it their own way, and then you know we kind of learn from our mistakes, right? Right, Brady? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> what year are you in, Brady? Uh, 2021. Okay. Sophomore. Yeah. So about a half a cup of buttermilk, right? Or so. And then you grab a rubber spatula, Brady. We're all set with this. I'll rubber do a spatula. Uh, yeah, rubber spatula. And we try to keep them all kind of try to keep everything in the same location. You know, label things when we can. When it makes sense, you know. All right, so you notice there's still a nugget of butter in it. It's not quite melted, but that's okay. It will melt. And then some lucky intestine is going to get a beautiful put a little butter in your mouth. Know? You want to get a spoon to taste them, Brady? Why don't you get a couple? If you mix them too much, they get cool and then they get kind of gluey, you know? Okay, yeah. So we, yep. we try to just to break the potato down uh, enough so they're creamy, right? And we leave a little bit of skin in there. We have the kids peel them about 90%. They leave a little bit on each end of the potato. Oh, nice. Because they're red skins. Yeah. So. How popular is that task? You what, get to peel potatoes. Hey, everybody who uh, makes the mashed potatoes has to peel them, you know what I mean? That's, uh, and they would do it every day, so. Right. Yeah. Tasting it, right? Yeah. 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 Big spoon full right now. <laughs> Can I give a spoon to Mr. Braley to try? Sure. I get to taste and only a little bit, right? Yeah, that's we're just tasting it, right? That's excellent. Not bad, right? That's don't excellent. Need, uh, you don't really need pepper or anything like that. No. Our, our meatloaf is well seasoned, so. Very good. So Let me, let me ask you about the uh, the other instructors here. Okay, who else is involved? You're not the only one. No, no, no. not at all. No, uh, we have a full-time baking instructor, uh, and that's uh, Chris Silva, Christine Silva. She's been here the longest out of all of us. Um, I, I don't know exact exactly how many, but she was mm -hmm. my teacher okay. when I was here. All right. Um, yeah, set it right there, Chris. Oh, and then, the what? what? You should fit right like this, buddy. The senior instructor is Robert Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. um, he's been here probably seven or eight years now, and he teaches like the he pretty much finishes them. You know what I mean? He kind of gets them ready to roll into um, graduation. Okay. Uh, and then we have a related instructor who teaches upstairs. He teaches on the academic cycle, and he does all the same stuff I do in the morning. He, he just kind of reinforces for juniors and seniors. He gets more in depth in the entrepreneurship and the math and some of the business practices, right? Um, and then we have um, our front of the house instructor out there is Joanne O'Neill, mm -hmm. and she teaches restaurant management and how to set a table and how to greet a guest and how to service the guest. Uh, and then we also have uh, our exploratory freshman instructor is Jason Sayedo, and he's our newest colleague. He's across the hall in its own kitchen. He's got his own little lab in there. Um, and he teaches freshmen. Right now he's doing freshman exploratory, which is kind of a wild schedule. It's, yeah. They do uh, three days of like immersion into a shop, uh, and they learn all about the ins and outs, and they get to see if it's going to be one of their top six picks right. uh, for the middle of the year when um, you know they, they end up doing all the whatever witchcraft it is they do to, to decide uh, who gets what shop, you know. Okay. Um, and then so Jason's the one that's in there, kind of inspiring them to to come along and join us for the next three and a half years. Great. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's a while. He, he does all kinds of stuff in there. He does like cookies with them. Um, he teaches them how to make pizza. They decorate a cake together. Uh, plus, they do a salad bar. So they actually get to do some production. Okay. Um, and then he makes them, you know, he teaches them how to make a different breakfast snack every day or, you know, something, maybe a little something to take to lunch with them. You know what I mean? Uh, just, just to excite them about what it is we do here and teach them that it's on your feet all day, it's hard work, you know, it's no, it's no joke, you know? So what we do is very, very busy business. Seems like everyone who's back here wants to be here. Oh yeah, are you yeah. kidding me? Look, this is this is the only career in culinary arts where you get to work Monday through Friday, you know? Um, <laughs> I volunteer for the football games on Friday nights, but you know, that, other than that, like, you don't have to like, it's, it's a great, it's a great career, really, you know? Um, plus, 
if you love food, and, you know, and I mean, it's all about teaching. As a chef and owning restaurants, I train the staff. I, you know, I help my I help my cooks do a better job every day. Like that's that's what we do. So this is really not. It's just an extension of what a chef does. It's all about sharing that knowledge. You know. We're in the coffee shop just moments before we open. Mrs. O'Neill is with us. Now, you're in charge of the coffee shop, right, as far as yes. what? The whole experience when uh, someone comes in? Training the staff, um, serving the teachers their lunch and people from the outside and teaching them how to clean and keep it sanitized, that sort of thing. What, uh, when you say training the staff, that goes there, uh, what? Greeting the customer? Greeting and the customers, serving them in the proper steps of service, using sanitary methods for serving, using the POS system to put the um, orders into the kitchen through okay. the computer, yeah. um, teaching them to set up and clean up for the next day, you know, mise en place, and just how to be anticipate the needs of the guests and keep them happy. Everything, oh, there's a bell. There they come. Every, I saw everybody's getting ready. It's yeah, like, well, yeah. we get hit pretty hard because, you know, the teachers are on a very tight lunch schedule, so it's pretty quick service in here, but the kids do a great job. All right, we'll yep. get out of your way. That's all right. All right. And thank you. So believe it or not, I am sitting in a high school. And uh, yeah, we're here in the uh, coffee shop as the teachers come in for their lunch. It's been a great day and a very interesting day here at Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School. Our thanks go out to Henry Bosquet, uh, Chef Henry Bosquet, for opening up the kitchen and showing us what his day is like here at the school. And uh, best of luck to these kids. And I think you saw before, there's a wide range of jobs and uh, occupations that they could go into from this culinary arts program and it's a real gem here in the north end of New Bedford. Classroom Chronicle wants to know what's happening in the schools. You can reach out and just let us know. Reach us on Facebook or uh, you can comment on, on uh, Twitter. It's at Pete Braley. We'd love to come out and see your school and see what goes on, what makes it special for the uh, kids of New Bedford. Until next time, I'm Pete Braley. We just, just finished dinner, dinner and, and it was, was time, time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard a as I harder. can. One in five children struggle with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org.